All right, we are live here at Build 2015. How are you guys feeling about Build? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm really excited to be here with Alex Kibben. I'm gonna start with this. Last week, I was at a conference in Russia, like all the way on the other side of the world. The first question was, is HoloLens real? The answer is yes, yes it is. Indeed, it is real and not holographic. Um, here is a real HoloLens. Um, this is one of the several hundred devices mm -hmm. that we brought here at Build this week, um, where we're having a lot of the folks here at Build experience HoloLens for themselves in any one of our you know, three activities. So what has the reaction been so far for those people that have been playing with it? So far, um, it has been uh, uh, pretty phenomenal. Uh, people, you know, come in excited and um, we ask them beforehand about expectations. Mm -hmm. um, we also ask them afterwards what they thought and um, most people come out surprised um, on how real it is. <laughs> yeah. um, they still come in with some amount of skepticism, skepticism of, okay, so I saw it on stage, it was on a screen, I've seen the videos on the web, is it really that good yeah and um, they come away usually with the impression that you know indeed everything that we have shown and um, put up so far um, is how the device feels the no. first time i saw this in november i was in the same camp i'm like this is this is too good to be real but it is it is real and um, for most people that experience it uh, you know you can't describe it um, we have this sentence on the team that holographic experiences you must kind of see them to uh, believe them, Yeah. right? And there's a materially different experience when you see a hologram pin right into your world. Because even when you see it on a video, when you see it on a screen, it's not as immersive and correct as literally seeing something on top of your coffee table, on co um, next to your computer monitor, or any one of those places. Right, so here's the thing. So by the way, ask questions. We're, we're taking questions live. But I want to ask this question because I'm, I'm a developer at heart. The universal Windows platform, you keep saying that yeah. if you build on top of that, it's going to also work on HoloLens. How is that? Well, so HoloLens runs um, Windows 10, mm -hmm. um, the same Windows 10 that we know and love. The universal API set that HoloLens primarily exposes and takes advantage of is the API set that deals in terms of human understanding on one side. Okay. Right, that's things like gaze, understanding where you're looking, um, so that if you're looking at a holographic microphone, as a developer, you have access to understand that, hey, someone's trying to target this object, real or otherwise. Um, the gesture input of it, right, so that I can track your hands and I can actually say, hey, I'm looking at this holographic object and I can click on it to select it. Uh -huh. So those API in speech ultimately is the same engine behind uh, Cortana okay. um, that sits here, the same extensibility. Um, so gaze, gesture, and voice um, are fundamentally APIs we've lit up across all of Windows 10. And HoloLens I takes advantage see. of those. I see. Um, on the environment understanding side, the other half, also those APIs exist in every Windows 10 um, build from the little screens to the big screens to no screens at all. The API set for environment understanding, for world understanding, really kind of dovetails in two big categories. The first one is this idea of letting developers know about an XYZ plane right. uh, in the world. So that if I want to, as a developer, place a holographic object on top of a surface, I can literally say, hey, here's the coordinates for it, and you would place it here. Now, if I'm wearing a HoloLens, I would see it. If you're wearing a HoloLens, you would see it. Right. Um, and as a matter of fact, you know, anybody here would be able to share the same object in the same XYZ coordinate plane mm -hmm. as everybody else. That's one piece of world understanding. The next one is really spatial mapping. Okay. Right? This idea of being able to say, hey, you know, how, if I'm trying to place a holographic microphone on top of this table, I have to know the tables here. Yeah. You, right? Yeah. Um, so I need to be able to scan this environment in real time. Um, and be able to, in terms of developer APIs, essentially create a mesh of it, right? And right. once I get a mesh of this environment coming in real time, I can then project to it, 
and I can say, hey, go play something on top of it. Have it intersect or be on top of um, the spatially mapped space. It's quite remarkable all of the things that are happening all at once. Is there, are you offloading this computation somewhere? Is it all happening here? How, is, how can That's you do that? That's a great question. Um, the answer is very carefully. Um, so you should imagine that this, the HoloLens has you know, several different sensors from microphones that are listening um, to the ambient sound as well as the speaker wearing it, right. um, to cameras that are looking and scanning and, and mapping the space, um, to any number of other ones. Uh, now, you should imagine that at any point in time we will have terabytes of data um, going in at the same time that need to be processed for us to be able to understand the humans and the environments they're in. Correct. This is more data than most you know, traditional SOCs today um, would be able to process. So what we've done is we developed a third coprocessor. We call it the HPU okay. or the holographic processing unit. And then we take all of this sensor data we feed it to our holographic processing unit. It is responsible for doing all of the human and world understanding. Got it. And then you get a very thin stream going from the HPU over to your CPU and GPU, which in turn allows the entire you know, processing power of the CPU and GPU to be dedicated to developers so that they can create beautiful, amazing experiences. That's cool. So the HoloLens can work on its own. There's no companion device that's working with it? That's right. One of the amazing um, feats of the device is that it is a standalone, fully untethered holographic computer. That's there cool. are no markers that need to exist in the world around you. There's no external cameras that need to look in for us to be able to do this. All the sensors are in here. And you also don't need a connection to a phone or a connection to a PC. All That's of awesome. that infrastructure is actually in this beautiful top part of, this, of, of the device. That's really cool, because I, when I first saw it, I thought they have to have something else going, but you've developed special hardware to take care of the understanding of the environment. That's right. That's pretty well. All right, some questions. What part of the APIs are specific to HoloLens and what parts are Windows holographic? That's a great question. And the answer is, um, there is no such thing as API specific to HoloLens. HoloLens is the first and so far only holographic computer out there, but it doesn't mean that it will remain that you know, for a very long period of time. Right. As a matter of fact, I hope that in not the so distant future, there'll be many such devices. And then Windows Holographic is the operating system that we put on it, which is just a variant of Windows 10. I see. So this is running Windows 10, all of the APIs, for human and environment understanding are part of Windows. And this version of Windows that we put on this device, we call it Windows Holographic. Right, that's remarkable. Ayush says, any possibilities of HoloLens in design, architecture, and construction? I'll tell you, I used to work as a consultant mm -hmm. for architects, engineers, and contractors. They are always working in 3D space flatly. Absolutely. Um, so we had, uh, you know, you should go check out our hololens.com website. Um, we have a great video there by one of our announced partners yesterday at the keynote. Um, their name is Trimble. Okay. Trimble is a construction company and they have you know, lots of different softwares for architects as well as you know, different things that they do um, in situation on site as they're building any number of these constructions. They have been working for several months now um, with HoloLens, with Windows Holographic, um, and in my mind have already pushed forward that industry in pretty profound and meaningful ways. Yeah. Right? All the way from how the architects um, see their, their work um, in 3D on top of maquettes. <laughs> um, right? And a lot of this architecture work is done with these very expensive, many tens of thousands of dollars maquettes. Right. Um, and now instead of building one changing something and having to build another one. You can build one with the surrounding area and then project the hologram on top of it. This is a faster way for the architects to communicate with the clients. It's a faster way for people to be able to visualize the work and any number of things. They couple that with you know, a piece of software they have on the PC mm -hmm. that allows them to keep track of different works and issues going on at the construction site. And then the people at the construction site also then have hololenses. And what that allows them to do is essentially, you know, imagine, you know, someone is in the construction site, they can 
overlay on the actual construction how the building is supposed to look. Now they can find an issue on it. Hey, there is a you know, pipe here where there's supposed to be a door. Right. They can leave a note there for the architect who can remotely, in his office, look you know, it. see the note, put the HoloLens on, and then see what the other person is seeing, and they can synchronously or asynchronously have a conversation right. while they're apart. They can immediately fix the issue and you know, document that across their, their tracking software. And that's such a really, that's a good tight sort of feedback loop between the architect and the contractor or the engineer because you know architects build these beautiful things that's right. and engineers are like yeah we can't make that and let me show you why but they can see why that's exactly correct and they get to annotate it and everybody has a much faster um, um, conversation and they go from issue to resolution in a much more natural way because at the end of the day we live in the real world right and as much as you can then overlay all of this amazing digital content and pour it over the real world, at the end of the day, your digital life becomes significantly more powerful right. once you can see it in the context of the real world. And as right. a matter of fact, this Trimble experience, uh -huh. for those here at Build, it's one of the demos we have of HoloLens for people to actually put the device on and try it. Oh, cool. All right, so Manfred says, how can I start developing for HoloLens? In anticipation yeah. of it coming out, people are excited, they want to get started. How do they do that? The easiest thing I can say um, more generic thing I can say is just start getting to know how to develop for essentially mobile 3D development. At the end of the day, you know, part of the journey, the developer journey for HoloLens, is creating tools that are familiar um, to the skills that developers already have. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, if you think about your average, you know, mobile 3D platform, what are you trying to do at the end of the day? You have some physics in that 3D environment, you right. have some meshes in that environment, and you're trying to place digital assets um, on top of it, right? And there's several different middleware tools that make that um, very easy for you to do. And I would say go familiarize yourself. This is a 3D world, so this is not a 2D world. It's Got not it. like putting you know, buttons on a form, but if you go get familiar with what it means to have a mobile 3D development experience, um, you will have a very easy and transparent process to becoming a holographic developer. Got it, that's great. Derek asks, I love the idea of using it with Skype, but how do you appear to the people on the other end? They get to see you with HoloLens obscuring your face, it seems. No, the thing I liked about, because there was a video with Skype where the, the father was helping someone fix, because I'm horrible at fixing mm -hmm. things. My wife is the one that fixes things in my house. It'd be nice through Skype to be able to see that. How did that, how did that demo work? How that's does that right. work? So, you know, that is another demo we have here at um, Build for people to see. It's our holographic Skype experience. And you should imagine that, like anything, Skype is, you know, works on any number of different device endpoints. Right. So imagine for a minute that video you're referencing, mom or dad are coming through a tablet of some sort. Mm -hmm. Running Windows, it has Skype. And the beautiful thing is, from that device, what the HoloLens adds to it is you can actually see from the wearer's eyes. There's a very being John Malkovich moment in your life. Nice. Um, because at the end of the day, person is moving around and you can see precisely where they're staring at. And then as you can see through their eyes, you can see the space and we'll do a 3D representation of it uh -huh. so that you can easily annotate it. Now as you annotate on this tablet with ink, with touch, with mouse, with keyboard, well, what would happen is that annotation shows up to the wearer of HoloLens right in their world, right. right in the right place. So I could say, hey, you know, go make sure that this microphone is turned around a little bit. On my different device, I can you know, write a holographic little circle, which makes it for me very simple to then understand right. and have it in context what I'm going to do. So a person in HoloLens would see essentially a little 2D window Mm -hmm. with a, the face of the person on the other side. So if mom and dad are on a tablet, you just see, and you can, that can be on your body, walk around the house, the thing is chasing around, or you can pin it to the world. I could literally take your feed, put it on a wall, and say, leave it there so that I know where you're at and I can just you know, keep tracking back. Person That's on cool. the other device sees from my eyes, so to answer the question deliberately, they don't see me, right? They see through my eyes and then they can annotate and put things in context. 
Now we have several experiences, not the Skype one. Um, this is a great example is our Mars experience that we've done in partnership with the, with the folks at NASA, uh -huh. where you are in the same place with someone else uh, and you're all wearing HoloLenses. And at that point, what we've done and what we've found to be very effective is to essentially create a 3D avatar of that person. Right. So you don't see that person. As a matter of fact, in our videos, you'll find both in the Trimble video, there's kind of a bluish avatar uh -huh. that's helping the person um, in, in, in the construction site. On the NASA one, it's an orangey person, but the same concept. Right. So you have a 3D avatar. And the beautiful thing is that you don't have on other platforms or devices, you can actually know where the person is staring, right? So at this point, like imagine you're taking a walk on Mars. Mm -hmm. You're physically sitting somewhere walking on Mars and someone is physically sitting in a different location walking in Mars with you. You can look at a rock and you can say, can you tell me about that rock? The person on the other side will see this orangey avatar of yours um, but they can see precisely where you're gazing. Yeah, Remember, we, we saw we that at the demo yesterday that's too. That's exactly correct. And that context is everything. And then geologists on the other side can say, yes, I can tell you all about it. But more interestingly in that, let, let, me, let me point your direction to this rock because the stratification of it is better. And now you're having a very deep, personal, in-context conversation, right. uh, even though you're not in the same space. That's cool. So here's a question. It's, it sounds kind of more of a functional question. What happens to apps pinned to the kitchen's wall after I leave the kitchen? Is it up to the developer? Um, the short answer is it depends. Yeah. Like if you're in Windows Holographic proper, right, like any operating system, we have a shell. Mm -hmm. Well, the shell is owned by the operating system and it's where applications in general exist. What you saw Darren demonstrate on stage yesterday was that. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, the user, the customer, the person that owns the HoloLens gets to choose where to place what. Right? And I can say, hey, I want to place this application, this universal Windows app of a video on this wall. Right. Um, I want to place this calendar app on my kitchen table. Those things are then persisted there across sessions and across time. Got it. Until the you know, customer comes in and says, you know what, I don't like the little Maui um, weather hologram there. Bloop. And I can delete it. Right? Um, now, that's the context of the shell. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I'm a developer. Right, and I created a Windows Universal app that's completely immersive. Let's mm -hmm. say, as an example, our Walk on Mars um, NAS experience. At that point, persistence of that Mars scene in that room and where you place the rocks and do they stay there across sessions of time or not, mm -hmm. the decision of that is the developers. I see. Cool. So another question, will applications like Cortana and Office provide an interactive environment before just a flat form in HoloLens? Well, um, it's a great question. Let me answer the Cortana one first. When uh, I said that Windows generally has enabled human and environment understanding across all the different operating systems, the human part is Cortana, the speech engine for Cortana. So you should imagine that you will be able to interact through speech with Cortana on HoloLens, much like you do on your desktop, much like you do on your phone, uh, much like you do not with Cortana but with speech, um, on Xbox. Got it. The same speech engine and the same speech APIs will cross all of our devices, HoloLens included. Now on the Office end, um, well Office is a broad package with lots of different products. Skype is part of Office, mm -hmm. so Skype has a very specific, as an example, experience on HoloLens that is completely redone and holographic. Other applications take, you know, Outlook. Outlook and all of the other you know, uh, modern version of Office experiences mm -hmm. will start as flat 2D panes, much like Darren showed on stage yesterday with his calendar, and over time, you know, um, they will change. Yeah, that's, that's really good. We have some questions also coming from Reddit. We have a subreddit on build. Will Connect be a part of Windows Holographic? I figured since Connect doesn't stray too far away from HoloLens that it would be considered a part of it. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, the idea of Connect, quote, quote, is ultimately um, a set of sensors that understand humans. Mm -hmm. Connect understands humans in three different you know, perspectives. It understands human speech, it understands human identity, and it understands human gestures. All of those things exist across all versions of Windows. Right. Identity has become the feature we've announced uh, at WinHack this year called Windows Hello. 
this idea that I can I walk see. in front of a machine and immediately be logged in securely and safely, right? And, and be authenticated with payment instruments and enterprise resources associated with. Right, so that has existed. It started in Connect mm -hmm. uh, many years ago. It's now a different feature that has shown up on all Windows 10 devices. Got it. Speech is the same thing. It started with Connect and now has become Cortana and we have talked about it. On the gesture side of the world, that's just a piece of human understanding again. Right. Those API sets for understanding humans from a gesture perspective will exist in Windows, HoloLens included, um, from you plugging in a Connect that works and that's supported and we love it, um, that also will exist with, you know, Intel RealSense sensors as an example, right. on bezels of any number of machines coming out this holiday with Windows 10, that will also work and coexist in HoloLens as you get in front and you start gesturing. So that's when cool. I say, and this is a super important point, APIs for human and environment understanding exist across all versions of Windows, that's inclusive of all of the work that started on our team on Connect. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's kind of like the, the there's like the grandfather uh, Connect, and then we're moving on. So all these technologies are sort of bringing together to make Hololens. It's one of the beautiful things with Windows 10. Windows 10 has taken a huge step forward in being able to consolidate all of our different device endpoints in Windows in one API surface area with one universal store, right. right? So that as a developer, I can immediately target any number of devices with the same binary. Got it. And I can get my same skills to be applied across anything I want, and I can tailor it. David Treadwell had a great keynote this morning where he showed an example of writing a universal app that could just work vanilla across all of our device endpoints, from Surface Hub to HoloLens to PCs, tablet phones, and Xboxes. But then, you know, as a developer, and he showed this, it was a great demo this morning, um, he showed how to tailor them and how to, as a developer, do different device targeting to say, if HoloLens, well, it shouldn't be a flat thing. Let's make it a 3D volumetric beautiful hologram. Right. If Xbox, you know, Terry showed this on his keynote yesterday on the um, USA Today app. That's right. Let's not show text, let's show video instead. So all of that was a huge, ginormous bet on Windows 10 to essentially say, you know, consolidate our device endpoints to a billion plus devices and make those billion plus devices available to developers with a consistent API set Correct. and a universal store. Human and environment understanding being just a portion of that. That's awesome. A question from Anthony, how will HoloLens be used in the medical industry? Wow, I mean, the sky's the limit in that area. Sky's the limit, um, and again, it's exciting. Um, and we are partnering um, with many different people in that space. The one I'm most excited about is the ones we had on stage yesterday, and it's a partnership we're doing with Case Western Reserve University Correct. and the Cleveland Clinic, where they're really looking at it, um, at least to begin with, in terms of the impact it can have in education. Right? If you think about how most modern medicine is still taught um, in school, it's on cadavers. Yeah. And it's a very difficult thing for people to, you know, try to understand how a human is alive by inspecting one that is not. Correct. And all of a sudden, if you can put a holographic human in there and understand the right proportion, the right scale. And motion. How something would yeah. move and how something would, you know, um, look through a person and any number of things like that. It's a very, very powerful tool. Yeah, that's cool. So one of the other things, and, and Ben sort of alludes to that in his question, you guys have a special camera to see what someone sees on HoloLens. How is that done? That's right. Um, so we, one of the things we struggled on for a very long time is how do you get someone to experience a HoloLens without wearing it? How do you <laughs> talk hard. about it? How do you announce something like this in a stage um, on a telecast when you know, people don't get to put one of these at home? I would love to say, hey, everybody, put a HoloLens on and let's share a holographic experience. Right. Um, that, well, that doesn't work if you're sitting at home today. So what we've done is essentially taken a HoloLens apart, taken all the different components of it, you know, bought a 4K, 2K camera, mm -hmm. um, and then mounted through that camera um, all of our different sensors. So when a human puts this on, you have two eyes looking through these holographic lenses right. with a lot of sensors that are keeping track of how this thing is moving and understanding the humans and the environments around it. Mm -hmm. 
Now imagine for a minute that you know this very expensive 4K2 camera, 4K 2K camera, is a human eyeball. I see. Now imagine I can put all of the same sensors um, on top of it. And as a matter of fact, if you look at you know our camera on stage, it kind of has a little HoloLens sitting on top of it. It has little glasses, right? Um, because we, you know all of our sensors are connected to it. And now all of a sudden, when you put this camera on and you're moving around, you know it's no different than a human moving around with the same environment and human understanding grafted in. I see. Now, if there's a person on stage wearing the device, they're seeing a hologram placed over there. If there's a camera person watching from the other side, it's just like another human wearing a HoloLens. Oh, so they I get both it. see the hologram in the same place from their different viewpoints, right? So then the, the, the person on stage is looking at it, person on camera is looking at it, and you get the beautiful you know, um, like parallax the, you saw on stage yesterday. It's like the NASA demo on stage, but someone else is a camera. That's exactly correct. And Got you should it. imagine that any number of people wearing HoloLenses share this map. They share their environment understanding and they share the holographic experience. Got it. So we just essentially say, hey, what would it look like if we dressed the camera with a HoloLens and made the camera eye be just like a human eye? I see. That's awesome. Mitchell asks, does the HoloLens have any kind of range finder or depth perception built in? And is it easy to access when developing applications? That's a great question. Um, the answer is yes. Um, no range finding. That stuff is not that cool. Um, there is a, the equivalent. Um, let me put it this way so they can see it. Um, there's an equivalent of a Kinect in here. Think about it as you know a next generation Kinect, um, something that is significantly more powerful than the Kinect that that we have shipped to date. That sits here, super tiny one. And it essentially worries about understanding the human, mm -hmm. right? That's depth tracking. That's how I know where you're gesturing so you can select things. That's also looking out and, you know, not only understanding the world, but doing that um, surface mapping, um, spatial mapping of the world. Mm -hmm. So that mesh that comes back out for a developer to access is essentially, you know, something that originally came um, from a depth sensor that's sitting on the device. Now, the other half of the question, which is, how easy is it to access? And the answer is, it's not accessible. Um, you can access the API sets for both human uh -huh. and environment understanding. And those things are abstracted by us, but you don't get access to the actual sensors. Got it. For a very simple reason. We want to make sure that there is a plurality of these devices that exist. We want to make sure that even within this device, as you version from version to version to version, you keep the applications in the App Store consistent. And you yeah. keep that promise to customers consistent. So then one of two things happens. You can't innovate on it anymore because you'll break everybody. Right. Um, or um, you change things and you break everybody. We don't want to do either. We both want to innovate and we don't want to break people. So we abstract all the sensors. We don't give sensor access to any of the developers, but we give access to the experiences that the sensors are actually understanding. Yeah, because otherwise, like there would be a plurality of experiences, and that, I don't know. It, you want to have a consistency, and that's what an API gives you. That's exactly correct. From a consistency correct. to some hardware. All right. So. DJ asks, will it be possible to take a video recording with HoloLens and have the holograms I see recorded? We love that feature. We call it mixed reality capture. And, and so it's we do one have of that. the things that um, there is a, a photo video camera here as well. Um, and not only is a photo video camera, I meaning you can take stills and videos of the real world, much like any of your consumer products can today, uh -huh. but because it's a HoloLens, we can intercept that feed and do essentially the same thing we do on stage. So that stage, when you see, you know, on a screen, you see the screen with the hologram on top of it. Right. Right. Um, that's just a mixed reality capture coming from HoloLens that's cool. um, from the person um, carrying it. Now, the camera on stage is a much higher resolution camera. Right? This is not a 4K, 2K um, camera here, but you get that same experience. Got it. Right? And it's one of the, th and the ability to take a mixed reality capture and then easily share it I know. to all of your social media sites is something we are actually super excited about. One of our one to one experiences for people here at Build is Hollow Studio. And in Hollow Studio, one of the things we have people do here at Build is essentially put a 3D pony that they build on top of a couch where then you get another human to kind of come next to it, <laughs> and they take a mixed reality capture of it so that they can see that feature um, in action. It's super fun. I can't wait to see all sorts of social media light up with um, shorts, videos, and stills of holograms. I think it's a really cool thing. I'm pretty excited. Uh, 
It seems like we're kind of running low on time. So here's a very serious question. Very serious answer. So you have some really cool hair. Can we get a HoloLens with your hair on the side? Like a special edition Alex Kipman HoloLens hair? Well, ha yeah, um, you know, uh, we have a long uh, uh, feature list to go through, but okay. make sure to add that to the bottom <laughs> um, and, you know, find the, the hair version uh, skew of HoloLens uh, in a theater near you. Uh, announced here, hair version skew of the HoloLens. Thanks so much. Is there anything else you want to tell developers out there? No, um, we're excited. We're excited to interact with developers here at Build. Um, we hope to, you know, a lot of people come by um, to play. Um, we love the feedback. Um, there's been tons of feedback over the last hundred or so days as we've announced it. Um, and we love it. The team thrives on it. There's a lot of for us to learn. And ultimately, this holographic journey is one we're going to have to do together, all right. of us. Right? We started the developer journey for HoloLens here at Build yesterday and is only now beginning, which means as we proceed forward into the summer and to ultimately launching the device, um, I look forward to all the feedback. It's going to be exciting. Lots to learn, lots to do. I'm pretty excited too. Thanks so much for spending some time with us, Alex, on this. Thanks Thank for you, watching, sir. and we're going to take a little break and we'll go to the next. Thanks you guys for watching. Do you like this? It's good stuff. <laughs>